Sikhs believe that God is and created reality. But we forget this because humans are distracted by illusion or... Oh, <laughs> look at this meme! So this is... Wait, you can't see because this is in the way. Hold on. Oh, wait. How could I get rid of this? For a second. Oh, now you can see. Maya, so humans are not paying attention to God. Wait, Maya is like sin and like the earthly pleasures and stuff like that? Because I'm all into Maya if that's the case. That sounded dirty. Or Maya. Hold on. Mm, subtitles. Yeah, okay, good. Which is anything that takes your mind off God. Maya keeps people trapped in the cycle of rebirth and death. Guru Nanak thought that Maya... Yeah, that's Buddhism. What? This is Trump. What? Wow, Trump looks so cute here. But that's exactly Buddhism. So, wow, the earthly pleasures and blah, blah, blah is keeping you distracted from what's really important, which is God. So, but, God, but yeah, they're just replacing this, uh, um, you know, what, what do Buddhism calls it when you actually become fully enlightened the enlightenment idea in buddhism they're just like yeah they're just rebranding it they're just putting a sticker on it every like oh buddhism said this we're just going to erase that and just kind of like oh that's god right you're going to not reach god if godhood if you're distracted yeah, basically this is the dunya versus akhirat in islam if you're thinking about if you're too distracted by the things in this world then you're missing out on heaven so it's what's heaven in islam it's enlightenment in Buddhism. It's God. It's literally God itself in Sikhism. So it's just it's just the same stuff. They're just renaming. Say nothing original as we see here. Katie saying, "Okay, this is getting too detailed right now." Katie, let's focus on this video. I'm not gonna read the. Okay, I'm just gonna highlight it for people who are interested. Um, and this is here. But this is false. Why it's not pleasing as here? So. Okay, Katie, let's focus on what we're talking on this video right now. And death. Guru Nanak thought that Maya built a wall between people and God. The wall of Maya is built with the five thieves. Lust, anger, ah, Lust again. Everybody is against lust for some but reason. Maya is built with the five thieves. L okay, so this is the, basically the seven deadly sins. The haram. So this is the haram of uh, Sikhism. So look, they're against lust. Every, why is everybody against lust? Why is it lust that everybody keeps attacking? Why do you guys against have have against happiness and pleasure? God damn it! Okay, L anger. So anger could be justified. Lust, anger, greed, greed, greed. Okay, greed or ambition. If you call it ambition, it could be considered positive. If you call it greed, it could be considered negative. Uh, but it's not. Whether it's bad, it's whether, it's whether it, again all of these again the teaching should not be that these are inherently bad. The teaching should be that you shouldn't let them take control over your life. Lust is good unless it takes control over your life. Lust, anger, it could be good if it's justified. Okay, justified anger versus unjustified anger. Okay, anger, greed, greed, um, or if you want to be more positive about it, you could say ambition. Uh, shouldn't take over your life. You sh it shouldn't consume you, but you should have some ambition in life. But you shouldn't let you let it consume over uh, other important things in your life. Okay, attachment. Attachment could be good too. You could have attachment to things that matter. You could have attachment to your children, your job that gives you f makes you feel important to your family, to a higher purpose. To serving mankind, you could have attachment to these things. Again, attachment is not inherently bad. It depends on what you're attached to, okay? And that you can recover if you lose that. Again, none of this is inherently bad. You, you this is what every religion gets wrong. I'll, I'll hear the things that are bad. No, they're not inherently bad. It depends how you manage them. Attachment and pride. Pride, yeah. Pride could be like again. Um, negative if you call it pride, but there's another name for it which could be positive, means self confidence. Okay? Again, self confidence could be a good thing as long as it doesn't, let, you don't let it get into your head and think you're the greatest thing since. Yeah, never mind. But yeah, pride is sounds negative, but self confidence sounds positive. It's, again, they're not inherently bad, 
it depends on how you manage it. it depends on how much of it you have there's a balance they're not inherently bad it is the duty of all six to avoid these thieves the five no do not avoid them enjoy them but don't let them consume you and make sure you manage them and make sure they're justified and make sure they're not sacrificing the rest of your life uh, katie saying the seven deadly sins the six temptations and now the five thieves waiting for four three two and yeah exactly wait the six temptations what well, that was what that was uh zoroastrianism right seven deadly sins is not technically christianity that was just dante's version of christianity but yeah thieves are oh wait who's this guy Akash is saying, Sikh, uh, Sikh kings converted mosque into uh, harems uh, where they made Muslim women dance in front of them. Those places are in present day Pakistan. Did they make them dance for them? Like, was it forced? Because if it wasn't forced, that sounds like a, that sounds awesome. If it's forced, that sounds horrible. But if it wasn't forced, uh, having women dance in a mosque... That sounds pretty awesome, actually. That sounds pretty epic. Um, six temptations was Hinduism. Oh, that was Hinduism. Yeah, okay. Hindu. Yeah, you guys are saying Hinduism. But but Zoroastrianism had something like that too. Caused by how my literally I myself. Wait, what is this? Thieves are caused by how my literally I myself. How my makes people say I am this, I am that, and it separates you from others which blocks you from realizing your oneness with God. This ego causes people to live only for themselves. Okay, guys, like this whole bull crap of getting rid of ego is something Buddhism, Hinduism, and now the Sikhism is talking about. You can't get rid of your ego. You need to manage your ego, okay? This is the same as like, oh, get rid of your lust. Yeah, you could try. You could also try some, to stop breathing. You can't. You can't get rid of ego. It's, part, it's hardwired into your brain. Don't again. This is why people get obsessed over trying to change their nature. There's a, don't get rid of your ego. This, your ego is good. It's, it's, it has a purpose. It has an evolutionary purpose. It's, that is why it's there. Don't get rid of your ego. The ego. Just manage. Just notice it. Manage it. Understand that it's there. You can't get rid of your ego, okay? And you could die trying, and you could waste your life trying to get rid of your ego, okay? Just look at it and understand it. Just I, be, become friends with it. Be like, yeah, I see you. I see you. I see you in my mind. I see you. Your influence on my mind. I notice you, and I'm gonna. You don't manage me. I manage you. You cannot kill it. You cannot kill your ego. And if you try. You're just going to waste years of your lives that you could be enjoying your life instead. To spew negativity and to crave power and wealth. Such a person is called Munmuk. Think oh yeah, power, so bad. Again, power and wealth um, sounds negative, but here's another terminology for it that all of a sudden sounds po positive. Power, you mean control. You mean having control over your life instead of letting your environment control you. Okay, so if you call it power, Sounds negative, but if you call it having control over your life, no, it sounds positive, right? So it's just a framing of it. So wealth. Wealth sounds bad. Oh, like, oh, you want wealth, you want wealth. But why do, you, why do people want wealth? Because freedom. Because they don't want to worry about the next bill that they have to pay, okay? So again, none of these things are inherently bad. It's how you manage them, okay? If you become ac obsessed with wealth for the sake of having wealth, then, then you're missing the point of... Having wealth, then you become obsessed with something that doesn't not going to bring you happiness. But if you want wealth because you want to be free, because you don't want to be a slave to the economy, you want to be able to have control over your life, you want to be able to decide where you go, what you eat, who you meet, you want to be able to have free time to not just work all the time, then all of a sudden wealth doesn't sound bad, that, as bad as, you know, anymore. It sounds like freedom, right? Again, none of these things are inherently bad. It's just how you, the way your relationship with them makes them good or bad. See, guys, I, you know, I should be a guru, <laughs> okay? This is just Guru Armin, okay? I'm, I figured this out. I figured all of this out way better than all like these religions tried to do for thousands of years. I have all the answers, okay? Just come to me. 
your guru, Guru Armin. You know, not 12 gurus, you just need one guru. Facing towards desires. Guru Nanak saw the world's problems as the negative effects of ego. Hindu versus Muslim, Israeli versus Palestinian, sitting down wipers versus standing up wipers. What the hell? People do this? That's gross. Standing up wipers? Get your sit back down. Don't get up until you're clean. Ew. That is gross. Gross, 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 gross. Hold on, let me see what the people in the live chat are saying. Hold on. Somebody tagged me. Oh, here. Uh, Andrew's saying, wait till you find out the Guru uh, uh, Grant Sahib um, is considered a living person. Yeah, we actually mentioned that. Well, I think we're going to get back to that. Armin, you're a Guru. Yeah, wait, who does... Somebody was just removed, timed out by AGA. What were they doing? Were they spamming? You're a guru. Mm, you're a guru, Armin Van Sikburn. <laughs> yeah. Um, guru. Okay, I'm just going to highlight this. I'm going to read this. All of these conflicts are caused by ego and Maya. The Guru Granth Sahib said it is not religion or race, but it is wealth that divides brothers. But uh, this anti-wealth, you're a bunch of commies then, aren't you? These Sikhs are just a bunch of commies, anti-wealth. Guru Nanak thought that there was an other direction people could You know what all the people need right now to make their lives a little bit better right now? The thing that you're against, wealth, okay? A lot of people in the world that are suffering, their lives could be a lot better with a little bit more wealth. So this anti-wealth attitude is really harmful. They need to, a lot of poor people that are suffering from poverty, getting more wealth should be on the top of their priority right now. That should be the main thing that could make their lives better, not your stupid religion. But Guru Nanak thought that there was an other direction people could face. By being a spiritual person, practicing compassion, truth, contentment, humility, and love, and meditating on God, you- Oh yeah, we, we're into good- we like good things and we're against evil things. Compassion- oh yeah, you're so original. Compassion is good, guys. Compassion is good. You only heard it from the Sikhs. Okay, actually they, they do give tell, say other people's, but come on, do you really need religion to know compassion is good? Oh yeah, the truth, truth is good, falsehood is bad. Oh wow, so, so helpful, thank you. We have, it's great that we have religion to teach us these things, guys, or else we wouldn't know that the truth is a good thing. Uh, contentment, humility, yeah, hum humility is overrated. Love, oh yeah guys, love is good, love, yay, good, th oh my god. Wow, we would have no known this if we didn't have religion. Wow, David, thank you so much for the super chat. $5 super chat from David is saying, Guru Grand Sahib contains scientific errors. Yeah, Katie was mentioning some of them. It says that moon is... Yeah, this is exactly what uh, Katie was saying uh, earlier. Wow, so this is, seems to be an important one if, if David is saying the same thing. It says that the moon is a source of its own light several times. Yeah, that seemed like a pretty easy... Thing to, way to completely discredit your entire religion and the funny thing is that they got this wrong at a time that other people knew that this was wrong like it's not something like it's not something that later scientists found out that they were wrong I mean if they done research at their own time they would have known that other humans that like they were behind their own time they weren't behind us they were behind the scientific understanding of the world at the time of the creation of their own religion and this is like really ancient stuff like ancient greeks ancient greeks knew that the moon's light comes from the sun they just noticed it was so easy for them too like they didn't have any space understanding of the you know planetary movements or anything like that and they're like oh yeah the side of the moon that is bright seems to always be pointing at the sun i guess moon's light comes from the sun the ancient Greeks, thousands of years before the Bible, and even the Old Testament, they realized, like, yeah, okay, moon's light comes from the sun. And these people, thousands, like, thousands of years later, they're like, oh, no, moon has its own light. Way to get something so easy, so wrong. 
Um, yeah, well, indeed. What else? KG is saying, but all religions are ultimately anti-egalitarian and feudal since they are quite casteist in practice. Sikhs still practice. Really? So they're anti-caste, but they still practice it? How is that happening? How did that happen? Kind of like Muslims were supposed to be anti-racism, but that didn't work out very well. Um, really? Sikhism is against skepticism? That doesn't sound good at all. We'll see. You could instead become Gurmukh facing towards the Guru. How does one become Gurmukh and egoless? Well, Sikhism... Impossible! You cannot become ego egoless. Is Yeah, you could die trying. How does one become Gurmukh and egoless? Well, Sikhism offers a path to follow that can help, called the Three Pillars.